welcome all to harris success point today we will discuss about cell structure and function when you look around you see both living and non living things so for living things we have certain characters which are not present in non living things some characters like growth breathing movement reproduction are confined only to living things so what makes a living thing different from a non living thing the reason is nothing but the cell the basic unit of life all organism are made up of cells so cell is common to both unicellular and multicellular organism let it be a unicellular organism like amoeba or a multicellular organism like a blue whale the common thing is the cell further studies on the cell led to the formulation of cell theory in 1838 matthias schleden and theodor schwann proposed the cell theory so thereafter the studies regarding cells started later rudolf virchow modified the cell theory as understood today so the main points or the cardinal points of the cell theory are all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells that means every organism is composed or all organisms are composed of cells and the existence of the cell depends upon the products of the cell that means proteins or other biomolecules produced by each cell then the next point of the theory is all cells arise from pre existing cell so this point gives us an information about cell division so a new cell arise from an old cell when we come to a cell it is the basic structural and functional unit of life the cell is separated from the external environment by a biological membrane which is commonly called the plasma membrane inside the plasma membrane there is a cytoplasm so the cytoplasm is a water like medium in which various biochemical reactions take place so for example protein synthesis then various chemical reactions are also take place in cytoplasm the most important part of a cell is the nucleus so the nucleus is the central or main part of a cell that means all the activities of the cell are controlled and coordinated by the nucleus nucleus is very important because inside the nucleus there is the genetic material of the organism so other structures called cell organelles like endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies ribosomes mitochondria cytoskeleton are also seen in cytoplasm cells differ in their size and shape and also in their function in unicellular organism a single cell forms the body of the organism whereas in a multicellular organism a large variety of cells can be seen that means different organ systems are there so the cells that are specialized to perform a particular function are grouped together to form tissues and tissues again combine together to form organ and organs again combine to form specific organ structures so in unicellular organism an organ system cannot be seen but the entire cell is the body all the activities takes place in that single cell but in the case of multicellular organism or an organism of higher order 
the body activities are carried out by different types of cells cells can be oval elongated disk like circular polygonal or even irregular the shape of the cell primarily depends upon the function of the cell different cells have different functions for example elongated cells like muscle cells they are meant for contraction and relaxation which is associated with the movement of an organism likewise the disk shaped cells like rbc they are mainly for gaseous exchange or for carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide and when we come to the case of plants some polygonal cells like sclerenchyma cells they are meant for mechanical support of the plant and some irregular cells like neurons they are meant for neural coordination or for transmitting the impulse so if we look through the living world a large variety of cells can be seen and each cell has different function of its own if we analyze the internal structure of the cells we can identify two kinds of cells in the living world they are prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell a prokaryotic cell differs from a eukaryotic cell in the sense that it lacks a true nucleus or a membrane bound nucleus a typical example for a prokaryotic cell is a bacterial cell so a bacteria within a bacteria there is no nucleus but the genetic material is located in a region called the nucleoid but when we come to a eukaryotic cell a well defined nucleus can be seen which is surrounded by a porous nuclear membrane then again if we look into prokaryotic cell membrane bound organelles are also absent mainly mitochondria lysosomes endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus vacuoles etc are also absent in prokaryotic cells but in the case of eukaryotic cells all the membrane bound organelles are present typical example for eukaryotic cell is plant cell or animal cell so for more details on the topic visit our channel haris success point thank you